Warning, this story contains extreme violence, slasher elements, and murder. I encourage you to listen to the entire story, and if you enjoy this type of content, please subscribe and press the bell icon to stay updated. In the shadowy depths of Transylvania, a remote village lay nestled between the mountains, where the pure-hearted Alara lived. She was a young woman of unmatched beauty, her innocence untouched by the world's cruelties. Every evening, she would walk through the forest, unaware that ancient eyes had been watching her for weeks, Dracula, the Prince of Darkness, had chosen her. His lust was no ordinary hunger, it was a craving to corrupt, to break what was pure, and turn it into something dark and twisted. One night, as the moon bathed the forest in silver light, Elara found herself lost in its depths. Mist crept at her feet, and a cold wind chilled her bones. She turned to leave, but a tall, dark figure blocked her path. Dracula emerged from the mist, his eyes burning like embers, filled with centuries of unholy desire. His voice, a deep, melodic whisper, penetrated her thoughts, I've been waiting for you, my sweet, Elara felt her heart race, but her body was paralyzed, her innocence trembling in the presence of his dark power. His gaze held her captive, and though her mind screamed for escape, her body betrayed her. A strange, erotic pull overtook her senses as he stepped closer. Dracula's cold fingers brushed her neck, sending shivers of both fear and pleasure through her body. I will show you what it means to truly feel, he whispered, his lips brushing her ear. With a flick of his hand, the forest around them darkened, and they were transported to his grand, gothic castle. Candles flickered, casting a dim glow upon the ancient stone walls. Elara stood in the middle of a vast, crimson-draped bedchamber, her breath shallow, her pulse quickening, Dracula circled her slowly, his cold hands caressing her arms, her shoulders. You've never known passion, he purred. But I will awaken something within you. Something you've never dared to imagine. His eyes glowed red, and Elara, now in his thrall, felt her desires begin to twirify it was intoxicating, Dracula leaned in, his lips grazing her throat, and with a sudden bite, her world exploded in pain and ecstasy. Blood trickled down her neck as he drank from her, his fangs sinking deeper, claiming her innocence with each pulse of her life force. Elara moaned, not from pain, but from a perverse pleasure she had never known, her body surrendering to his ancient hunger, but this was just the beginning. Dracula's desires were far from satisfied. He brought forth others, women he had corrupted long ago, their once innocent souls now twisted into servants of darkness. They surrounded Alara, their pale skin shimmering in the candlelight. Their eyes hungry and lustful, join us, they whispered, their hands reaching out to touch her, their cold fingers tracing over her flesh. Alara, lost in the Count's power, could not resist. She became part of their forbidden dance, her body entwining with theirs in a nightmarish blend of lust and blood, Dracula watched from the shadows, his eyes glowing with satisfaction. The women took turns tasting her, their fangs sinking into her delicate skin, each bite sending waves of pain and pleasure coursing through her. Elara was no longer the innocent girl from the village, she had become something else, something darker, something twisted. Her darkest fantasies had come to life, and she reveled in the madness. The night stretched on, filled with erotic horrors that defied the natural world. Blood flowed like wine, and Alara, now bound to Dracula's will, felt her humanity slipping away. But as the dawn approached, she realized that her transformation was not just a body but a soul. She had become part of his cursed desire, Forever enslaved to his insatiable thirst for blood and passion, Dracula's laughter echoed through the castle as the first rays of sunlight broke the horizon. You are mine, he whispered, his voice full of crows, casting pale light over the distant hills, Dracula withdrew into the shadows, leaving Alara on the blood-stained sheets of the crimson-draped bed. Her body, once pure and untouched, 
now bore the marks of his fangs, her skin bruised by the lustful bites of his brides. She lay in a trance, her mind awash in confusion and a perverse sense of pleasure that sickened and thrilled her in equal measure. The memories of the night's dark rituals haunted her, pleasure entwined with pain, a sense of loss mixed with desire, but as the silence of the morning settled, something stirred deep within Alara. It was faint, like a whisper from a distant place, her will, her humanity. Clinging to life. Yet, the bond with Dracula had irrevocably changed her, and the hunger he had awoken could not be so easily silenced, hours passed before she found the strength to rise, her legs weak, her body trembling. Ilara staggered toward the mirror, her reflection pale and unfamiliar. Her lips were stained with blood, her eyes darker, more hollow, yet still possessed a flicker of the girl she once was. She touched her neck, feeling the twin puncture wounds that would never heal, the mark of Dracula's claim upon her. Suddenly, a soft knock echoed from the heavy oak door. Before Alara could respond, it creaked open, and one of Dracula's brides entered the room. She was tall and ethereal. Her alabaster skin gleaming in the low light, her eyes filled with centuries of seductive malice. You are awake, sister, the bride said, her voice smooth as silk, dripping with dark intent. He will be pleased. Tonight, your transformation will be complete, Ilara's heart raced, the words filling her with both dread and anticipation. What do you mean? What will happen tonight? The bride smiled, a wicked curve to her lips. Tonight, you will join us fully. The Count has chosen you to be one of his eternal brides. But first, there are pleasures yet to be discovered. C protest, the bride reached out, her cold fingers brushing against her cheek, sending a wave of erotic energy through her body. Ilara's legs buckled, and she felt herself drawn toward the bride's hypnotic gaze. Resistance felt futile, desire clouded her thoughts as the bride led her from the room, down the winding, candlelit corridors of the castle, they arrived at a grand hall, its ceiling draped in dark velvet, the walls adorned with paintings of long-forgotten noblewomen, all of whom had fallen victim to Dracula's seductive power. In the center of the room stood Dracula himself, his dark figure like a shadow that commanded every corner of the space. Around him, his other brides lounged, their pale forms draped in thin silks, their eyes gleaming with unholy desire, Dracula smiled as Alara was led before him, his gaze piercing through her, reading her every thought. You have tasted the pleasures of the flesh, but there is much more to learn, he said, his voice sending shivers through her. Tonight, you will drink from my veins, and you will become one with the darkness, Alara's heart pounded in her chest. The air was thick with tension, with lust, with an anticipation that made her blood boil. As she stood before Dracula, she felt the weight of his power pressing down on her, her mind torn between the desire to escape and the irresistible pull toward him. Suddenly, the brides moved around her, their hands caressing her skin, their cold touch igniting something dark within her. They whispered to her in a language she could not understand, their voices a symphony of seduction. Her body responded to their touch, each sensation sending her deeper into the abyss of her awakening desire, Dracula watched with satisfaction, his eyes glowing crimson. Your heart still fights, but your body knows the truth, he said. You were meant for this, to be my bride, to embrace the darkness and the pleasure that her lips painted with fresh blood, stepped forward and took Alara's hand, leading her to Dracula's throne. Drink, she whispered, holding out her wrist, where a fresh wound bled slowly. Taste the blood of eternity, Alara hesitated, her body trembling as she looked at the crimson liquid dripping from the bride's wrist. Her instincts screamed at her to run, but the hunger inside her gnawed at her very soul. With trembling hands, she brought the wrist to her lips and tasted the blood. The moment it touched her tongue, a wave of ecstasy washed over her. It was unlike anything she had ever felt, pure, dark pleasure, flooding her senses, overwhelming her mind, 
she drank deeply. Her body convulsing with the intensity of the experience. The other brides surrounded her, their laughter like music, their hands exploring her body, drawing her deeper into the twisted ritual. Dracula stepped closer, his eyes glowing with triumph. He bent down, his lips hovering just above her ear, You are almost mine, Elara. Just one more step. One more taste of blood. And you will be bound to me forever, in the frenzy of the moment, Elara found herself unable to resist. The bride's wrist fell away, and in its place, Dracula's hand lifted her chin. He exposed his wrist, cutting it open with a flick of his clawed nail. Dark, thick blood oozed from the wound, and Alara's eyes widened as she realized what he was asking of her. Drink, he commanded, her lips parted, and as the first drop of his ancient blood touched her tongue, she was lost. The transformation began instantly. Her body convulsed violently, her heart racing as the darkness overtook her completely. She felt her soul slipping away, replaced by a hunger that would never be quenched, an eternal thirst for blood, for lust, for power, as she collapsed into Dracula's arms, her vision blurred. She could hear the laughter of the brides, feel the cold held her close, his lips brushing her ear once more, now, you are truly mine. For all eternity, but in the depths of her soul, a small flicker of resistance remained, buried beneath the overwhelming desire. A flicker that would wait, biding its time, until the moment it could strike back against the Count's cursed desire. Elara's transformation had begun, her mind and body spiraling deeper into Dracula's dark embrace. She lay in his arms, barely conscious, her veins burning with the ancient power that now coursed through her. The hunger was overwhelming, a need for blood, for flesh, for the twisted pleasures only the Count could provide, the bride surrounded her, their pale faces glowing with approval. Their eyes gleaming with the promise of more forbidden delights. Dracula watched her intently, a wicked smile curling his lips. Your soul teeters on the edge, he whispered, his voice a silken thread of temptation. Let go, Elara. Surrender to the darkness, and you will know pleasures beyond anything this world can offer. As the brides moved closer, their hands caressing her trembling body, Elara's mind struggled to hold on to some shred of her former self. She could still feel the purity of her heart, buried beneath the lust and hunger, screaming for release. But it was distant, fading, as Dracula's seductive power sank its claws deeper into her soul, one of the brides, a raven-haired beauty with eyes as black as the night sky, knelt beside her. She leaned in, her lips brushing against Alara's neck, sending electric shivers through her body. We were all like you once, she whispered. Innocent. Pure. But he showed us the truth. The pleasure in the pain. The ecstasy in the blood. You will learn to love it, as we have. Elara shuddered, her breath coming in ragged gasps as the bride's fangs grazed her skin. The bite came swiftly, sharp and deep, to the mix of pain and pleasure that flooded her senses. Blood spilled from the wound, and the bride drank eagerly, her moans of delight filling the room, but something within Elara fought back. A tiny flicker of defiance, buried deep within her heart, began to burn brighter. The more the bride drank, the more Alara felt her will returning. She could feel the darkness trying to consume her, but the taste of her own blood, the loss of her innocence, reignited a fury she hadn't known existed, no. She whispered, her voice hoarse but growing stronger. I won't be his slave. The bride looked up in surprise, blood dripping from her lips. Dracula's expression darkened. His eyes narrowing as he sensed the shift within Alara. You resist me still. He growled, stepping forward, his presence casting a shadow over her. You cannot fight what you are becoming. The darkness is in you now, and it will consume you. 
Elera's vision blurred, her body weak from blood loss, but the fire within her burned hotter. She shoved the bride away, stumbling to her feet, her heart racing with fear and defiance. I won't become one of your playthings, she spat, her voice trembling but filled with determination, Dracula's eyes flared with anger, his fangs bared in a snarl. You cannot escape me, Elara. You are bound to me now, for eternity. There is no going back. As he moved closer, Elara's mind raced, searching for a way out, for anything that could give her an advantage. She glanced around the room, her gaze falling on the brides, their eyes filled with a mixture of jealousy and hunger. They had all been where she was now, innocent souls, corrupted and twisted by Dracula's dark powers. But perhaps, in their jealousy, there was an opportunity, she took a deep breath, her body trembling with exhaustion, and looked into Dracula's eyes. Maybe I can't escape you, she whispered, her voice soft, laced with false submission. But Dracula paused, intrigued. The brides exchanged glances, their interest piqued. Choose it. Dracula repeated, his voice low, dangerous. You think you have the power to choose? Elara took a step closer to him, her eyes locked on his, her heart pounding in her chest. I want to drink from you, she said, her voice trembling but resolute. I want to taste your power. Willingly. Dracula's eyes gleamed with amusement. He took her chin in his cold hand, tilting her head up to meet his gaze. You think you can manipulate me? He purred, his voice dripping with condescension. You wish to taste my blood? Very well. But once you do, there will be no turning back. You will be mine in every sense of the word. Elara swallowed hard, her heart racing. This was her only chance. She had to get close enough to him, had to make him believe that she had surrendered, even as the fire of rebellion burned in her soul, Dracula smiled darkly and extended his wrist. He slashed it open with a sharp nail, and dark, thick blood oozed from the wound. The scent of it filled the room, intoxicating, overwhelming. Elara's mouth watered, the hunger inside her clawing for release, with trembling hands, she took his wrist and brought it to her lips. The blood was thick and bitter, but as it flowed into her mouth, she felt a surge of power unlike anything she had ever known. It filled her veins, dark and ancient, threatening to consume her completely, but instead of submitting, Hilara let that power fuel her resistance. She drank deeply, her mind spinning with the intensity of it, but she did not lose herself. She kept her focus, her defiance burning brighter with every drop, Dracula watched her with dark satisfaction, unaware of the fire that still burned within her. When she finally pulled away, gasping for breath, he smiled. Now, you are truly mine. Elara wiped the blood from her lips, her eyes dark and wild. She could feel the darkening to take hold, but she fought it with every fiber of her being. Not yet, she whispered, her voice shaking with barely contained rage. Before Dracula could react, Hilara lunged for a nearby dagger, an ancient blade that lay on a pedestal, forgotten by time but imbued with a power she could sense. With a scream of defiance, she plunged the dagger into Dracula's chest, burying it deep into his heart, the Count roared in pain, his eyes wide with shock and fury. The bride shrieked, their voices filling the hall as Dracula staggered back, blood pouring from the wound. Elara stood over him, her breath coming in ragged gasps, her body trembling with the intensity of what she had done. Dracula fell to his knees, his eyes burning with rage. You. Will pay for this, he hissed, his voice filled with venom. But Alara stood tall, the power of his blood still coursing through her, giving her the strength to fight back. I am not your slave, she spat, her voice filled with fierce defiance. And I never will be. 
As Dracula's body crumbled to the ground, the castle began to shake, the walls trembling as the ancient power that held it together began to unravel. The brides screamed, their faces contorted with fear and fury, but they did not move to stop her. Perhaps they saw in Alara something they had long forgotten, hope, rebellion, the will to fight back against the darkness that had consumed them. Elara turned and ran, her heart pounding in her chest as the castle crumbled around her. She could feel Dracula's power fading, the hold he had on her loosening with every step she took. But she knew the fight was not over. The darkness still lived inside her, and it would be a battle she would face for the stumbled out of Dracula's crumbling castle, the once majestic walls now reduced to piles of ancient stone. The ground beneath her trembled, as though the very earth was rejecting the evil that had ruled it for centuries. The cold air slapped her face, waking her from the nightmarish haze of lust, power, and blood that had consumed her for what felt like an eternity, but even as she gasped for air, blood still dripped from her lips, the taste of Dracula's ancient power thick in her mouth. His blood, the essence of his centuries-old darkness, pulsed within her veins, sending waves of forbidden desire and raw energy surging through her. She had won, but victory came with a curse. She could feel it, a deep, unsettling hunger gnawing at her insides, whispering promises of power, of eternal pleasure, and of blood, she clutched her chest, feeling her heart beat too fast, too irregular, as if it no longer belonged to her. The sky above her was dark, and the wind howled like the ghosts of the many souls Dracula had claimed over the centuries. But there was no peace, no sense of triumph in the destruction of the Count. Instead, the shadow of what she had become loomed large, haunting her every breath. Hilara didn't stop running until she reached the edge of the forest, her legs weak, her lungs burning. She collapsed by a small stream, her reflection in the water catching her off guard. Her once bright eyes were now darker, haunted, and filled with something new, something primal. Her skin, pale and marked by the bite of Dracula's brides, looked almost translucent in the moonlight. She could feel his power inside her, pulsing with every beat of her corrupted heart, the blood of the Count was now hers, Hilara closed her eyes, trying to steady her racing thoughts, but the hunger gnawed at her, a relentless beast clawing its way through her consciousness. Her teeth ached, and her fangs, newly sharpened, pressed against her lips, a cruel reminder of Wakila, yes, but his curse lived on inside her, a soft rustling in the bushes startled her. Elara's eyes snapped open, her senses heightened, her instincts suddenly sharp and predatory. From the shadows emerged a figure, a man, a villager from the remote town she had once called home. His eyes were wide with fear as he approached her cautiously, Elara. He whispered, as though afraid the wind might carry his voice to something far more sinister. We've been searching for you. Where have you been? Elara stared at him, her mind blank. She remembered him, one of the men who had helped her family in the village. His name escaped her, as though that part of her life was slipping further and further away. She opened her mouth to respond, but the only thing she could think of was the sound of his blood rushing through his veins. The pounding heartbeat in his chest was deafening, a symphony of life that made her mouth water, he took a step closer, concern etched across his face. You look... different. Are you hurt? The hunger clawed at her insides, the ache unbearable. She could smell the life pulsing through his body, feel the warmth radiating from him like a beacon. Her fingers twitched, her fangs throbbing as the desire to taste him overwhelmed her, no. She had fought too hard to escape Dracula's grasp. She couldn't become the monster he had wanted her to be, but the hunger was relentless. Ilara? He asked again, his voice more urgent. He knelt beside her, his hand reaching out to touch her arm. His skin was warm, his pulse steady. The smell of his blood, so fresh, so alive, was maddening. 
Her vision blurred, her throat tightening with the craving for it, the desire to sink her teeth into his flesh and drink until the hunger was satisfied, stay back, she rasped, her voice hoarse, barely human. She backed away, her hands trembling, her body betraying her as the hunger's eyes filled with fear as he saw the change in her. Ilara, what's wrong? What happened to you? She couldn't answer. She didn't know how to explain the darkness inside her, the curse that now defined her existence. All she could do was fight the urge to lunge at him, to tear into his throat and taste the blood that would finally quench her thirst, but the hunger would never be satisfied. She knew that now. The bloodlust was endless, a curse that would follow her for eternity. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps echoed through the trees. Ilara's senses sharpened again as more villagers approached, their faces pale and filled with worry. They had come searching for her. They had no idea what she had become. What was now hiding beneath the fragile remnants of her humanity, her heart raced, her fangs aching as she stood, trembling with the effort of resisting the pull of her new nature. The villagers gathered around her, speaking to her, asking questions, but she couldn't hear them over the pounding of their hearts. The sound was too loud, too tempting, and then, she saw it, a shadow moving through the forest, just beyond the group. Her breath caught in her throat as she recognized the familiar, predatory gaze from the darkness. The brides. They had survived. She could sense their presence, lingering in the shadows, waiting, watching. Perhaps Dracula had fallen, but his influence lived on. And they would not let her go so easily, Ilara's mind spun with terror and uncertainty. The villagers surrounded her, offering her comfort, but they didn't understand. She was no longer one of them. She could feel the darkness tightening its grip on her soul, pulling her closer to the edge, her lips parted, her breath coming in shallow gasps as the hunger roared inside her, she had escaped Dracula's castle, but had she truly escaped his curse? The brides lurked in the shadows, waiting to see fall into the same eternal damnation they had. The villagers were close, their warmth, their life, taunting her, the choice was hers, surrender to the darkness or fight against it. But the line between the two was blurring, her humanity slipping further with each passing moment, Ilara took one last, deep breath, feeling the weight of eternity pressing down on her. The darkness whispered in her ear, the hunger gnawed at her soul, and the eyes of the brides gleamed from the shadows, she looked at the villagers, at their innocent faces, their trust in her. Could she protect them? Could she resist the growing urge to feed, or would she become the very monster she had fought to escape? The wind howled through the trees, and as Alara stood on the edge of her fate, the night seemed to stretch on forever, filled with blood, with desire, and with the haunting question that would follow her for eternity, was she still strong enough to resist, or had Dracula's curse claimed her after all? In the distance, the shadow of the brides closed in, and the moon dipped below the horizon, leaving her in darkness.